everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to do a part two of the Q&A of your guys' questions for Boazich University. Basically, I'm going to answer your questions related to my experience, how I got in, and some general questions that you guys had commented on my first YouTube video and also on my TikTok. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, um, I study at Boazich University, which is a university in Istanbul. It's one of the top universities in Istanbul, or I guess in all of Turkey. And they have kind of an Americanized system, which means that they, I guess, attempt to follow the curriculum or the system that the United States universities follow. So as a master's student, I previously talked about in my first video how I got accepted and questions mostly about enrollment and admissions. This video will kind of go off on the questions that you guys had from that video and also the questions I've been receiving on TikTok and social media. So as a master's student, I had to, you know, take some tests, exams, I had to bring my transcript together and important information in order to actually submit an application for the Boazici Master Program. So somebody asked me, oh God, somebody asked me if I would mind sharing the GRE scores that I got um, and also my GPA. So my GPA from my undergraduate university in the States was a 3.74. And I had to take my GRE test to be able to apply for master's and they didn't really want anything high, like a very high score. And I wasn't gonna exert the energy to get a high score, but I got whatever was required. So um, a note is I'm not very good in English or reading comprehension, things like that. I have never been good at that all my life. And I've always kind of scored on the low side, whether it was SAT, ACTs, whatever standardized test it was, I always, for some reason, have difficulties with the reading comprehension section. I don't know what it is. But anyway, um, for the verbal reasoning part of the GRE, I got a 150. And then for the quantitative reasoning, which was the math section, I got a uh, 156. And then for analytical writing, I scored a 4.5. So do with that information as you will. I did not really, I took, I maybe studied for a month or two. No, I didn't study for that long for the GRE, but I just went in and hoping to get the bare minimum score that I needed to get into the program. And I just, I got that. So it worked out. Another question I received was if, I had any updates about the PhD program in Boazich University for Cognitive Science. So I'm doing my master's in Cognitive Science. As of now, I don't think that Boazici provides a PhD program to Cognitive Science. The department is fairly new, very unorganized, and very messy. So I'm not surprised that they haven't had a PhD program yet. Maybe they will in the future, or maybe they have one now. I'm not totally involved in what goes on in the cognitive science administration. I also get a lot of questions about the tuition that I pay. So the tuition ever since I started Boazici, the Turkish lira price of the tuition has changed and I pay the tuition per semester. So in my first semester I paid I think around 2,500 Turkish lira and I'll put somewhere on the screen the price that I paid at that time. But as of today, the tuition is um, the tuition is three thousand five hundred and sixty four Turkish lira. I'll put the conversion somewhere on the screen, and you pay that per semester, and that is for master's programs, or at least for my master's program. The price of the tuition does change according to whether you are an undergrad or a graduate student, and also for the department. So for example, engineering department, the tuition is a bit higher, it's around 11,000 lira per semester. Um, so that's just something you would have to kind of check with your department to see what they charge per semester. There's also a sheet online in the Boazici website, I'll link it down below. And it gives kind of an overview of the um, costs per semester. Another question I received is whether the classes are held online. So ever since the pandemic, the classes were strictly online for the first 
two years. <laughs> um, but right now it depends on the teacher. So some of the teachers actually still prefer to have the classes online. So they will keep their classes online. Other teachers like a hybrid mix. So sometimes classes will be online or face to face, or they'll give you the option to join online while they teach class face to face. And then other teachers just strictly have face-to-face -face classes. So right now it's a bit mixed. I'm not sure if it will switch completely to face-to-face. -to -face. I don't really know. Um, so there's that. Another question that I get all the time is, are the classes in English or in Turkish? <laughs> the classes are supposed to be 100% in English, whether there's a foreigner in the classroom or not. But if there is no foreigner in the class and if the teacher is Turkish, meaning that they're not foreign, there are some teachers who are coming from the United States, the UK, from all over the world. But some of the Turkish teachers um, will prefer to teach in Turkish in their class if they don't see any foreigners present. And typically what has happened in my classes at the very first day they will ask, are there any foreigners in this class? And that is your time to kind of speak up and say, I'm a foreigner. Then they know that there is a foreigner in the class, so they can't really speak in Turkish for the whole class. However, this was not the case for me, at least with my experience and my classes. Some teachers were pretty strict about it. They would say, um, okay, then the class is going to be 100% in English. There is no switching to Turkish. Nobody can ask questions in Turkish because sometimes if a student has questions, it's easier for them to ask the teacher their question in Turkish for them to better understand or just fully grasp whatever it is. Some teachers will say, please do not ask your question in Turkish because they know that there is a foreigner and maybe the foreign student has the same question that that student has. So I've had some teachers who are really strict and considerate about that. Other teachers, well, most of the teachers that I had, it was totally the opposite. So some teachers, they always ask, is there a foreigner in the class? Then you're, the teacher is kind of teaching, then a student has a question and the student asks the question in Turkish. So I don't know what the question was. The teacher answers the question in English and then the student will provide commentary back in Turkish. Then the teacher will switch to Turkish. Then there will be like a 10 or 15 minute discussion of whatever the question was or whatever it is in the class in Turkish. So sometimes that's very annoying, but I mean, I understand a lot of these students, um, English is not their first language and sometimes in academia it is difficult to grasp a concept and of course to better understand it, it makes sense that they would ask it in Turkish. So just that's just one thing that I encountered. Another thing that I encountered was my first semester in Bozici, I wanted to take a course and it was an online course. So everything was online when I came in because I came in kind of in the middle of the pandemic. And the teacher had released an announcement through the, you know, the university, whatever system. And um, she released an announcement and it was all in Turkish. And I emailed her, I said, I'm sorry, I'm a foreign student. Would you mind resharing that announcement in English? To which she responded that she doesn't want any foreigners in her class, that COVID really affected her mental health and that she will not be teaching in English. So if I could drop her class and add someone else's class. I thought that was very odd and I was a bit discouraged because I said, okay, well, that's just great. This is the first class that I registered for and I thought everything was going to be in English. So if nobody wants me, how is this going to work? So then I reached out to the other professor who taught the same course and I asked him, the first question I asked was, do you teach this class in English and would it be possible for me to join? Because it was kind of after the ad drop period. And he was actually from the UK and he was very shocked that this professor had made this kind of bizarre request. And it was just very funny because he told the department and then she sent me an email back she was like, well, thank you for telling somebody else about this situation. Now my job is on the line. You're going to get me fired, blah, blah. I don't know what happened to that professor, but 
that was one experience that an unfortunate experience that I had like as my first time in Boazici so there's that and then other teachers like that I had um they know I'm foreign so they don't really care that they know that I'm foreign so they'll switch to Turkish for maybe 30 minutes and then the teacher will be like oh sorry Sahar I forgot that you're here or I forgot that you know you don't know Turkish so it really depends on what kind of a person you get at Boazici. Another person asked me if the professors are nice and helpful and how they are. I don't want to give too much details right now about my experience with the professors. All I can say is it's been a mix. I've had some really great professors. I've had really terrible ones. They were all nice and respectful but sometimes it was just overwhelming because the way that they teach I, I'm not sure what they expect from the students but I encountered a lot of difficulties and actually a, a lot of people in my class encountered a lot of difficulties too so in some courses that I had it was completely self-taught um, I was taking an introductory programming course for example and it was totally the opposite of what the syllabus said. It wasn't an introductory course. Um, I basically, the teacher didn't teach anything. I basically had to learn how to build these programs using this um, software. And so it was very challenging. And other times, you know, teachers just give you stuff and they expect you to know it and understand it without any explanation. So there was a lot of moments where I had to teach myself a lot of the things. I guess you can find that at any institution at, at University of Florida. I encountered sometimes the same thing. Like I remember I was taking an organic chemistry class and the teacher didn't teach a thing and I wasn't very good at chemistry, but I would sit down for almost five or six hours every day self-teaching myself organic chemistry in order to pass these extremely difficult exams. So. These type of things I guess you'll find anywhere at every, any institution, but in Boazici I have a lot more to say about this topic, but I'm going to wait until I graduate before I can kind of give you guys more details about my experience and what happened. A question I also get all the time is, as an international student, what is the most difficult part? Everything. I mean, transitioning from another country into a new country, into an academic system on its own is very challenging, whether I was in Turkey or whether I was in a different country. It's going to be challenging. The thing that I encountered the most was there was a lot of lack of communication. So in a lot of the things, I kind of had to figure it out on my own. There was nobody who was willing to help me. My advisor did not help me at all in anything, nothing. You know, paying the tuition, registering for classes, like all those simple things. You know, typically you have an orientation or something of that nature, but there was nothing like that for me. So it was very difficult to kind of just figure out and navigate all these simple things. Also, I don't know anybody in Boazici and I didn't know anybody when I came. So I couldn't reach out to ask anybody questions. I just kind of had to figure it out on my own, which I did. And then if I had any administrative issues where I had to go to the university, like for example, I lost my ID. It was very difficult to get my point across to people because the administration does not know English. People processing IDs, academic records, things like that, a lot of them don't know English. So that's extremely frustrating because you know, if when I lost my ID, I was trying to get a new one and it was just very difficult to communicate with people and to get to the right place to finally get my new ID. So things like that. Also, you know, I'm trying to graduate early, so I had to go to this, the institute that I'm a part of and they also don't really know English very well. So that was very difficult too because I'm trying to get all my documents, all my things in order so that I can prepare to graduate from Boazici. So that was a difficult thing. Another difficult thing was um, I didn't make any friends. I only have one friend and he's from the lab that I'm in. He's my closest friend, but you know, he's leaving <laughs> to do PhD. It was very difficult also to make friends because in my program, because I'm a master's student, I'm confined to my department. 
and my department is extremely tiny so there's not much room to socialize and to see people from other departments at least for me and then the other thing is social activities clubs things like that they all speak in turkish a lot of the people don't not a lot but the people that i encountered at least they were hesitant to talk to me because their english they're not so confident with it and they would fear that i would make fun of them or that they don't have enough capacity to talk to me which is not the case i'm not that kind of person who makes fun of people for their lack of english or whatever it is i you know i grew up with immigrant parents and my father till this day he's been in the states for 30 years has problems speaking in english so it's something that i'm used to and that i understand extremely well and i know where people are coming from so that was very difficult um that was a difficult part of being an international student and then also when i came in during the pandemic everything was online so that was another difficult thing i was very isolated i couldn't i couldn't go outside i couldn't meet new people because there were restrictions for a year at that time and all my classes were online so it was very challenging um there hasn't been much at my time in boazici that has been easy Everything that I had to do in Boazici has been a challenge. Everything. Another question I get is the reason and the benefits for coming to Boazici University. So one of the benefits to coming to Boazici is obviously the tuition is significantly cheaper in Turkey than in the United States or I don't know where else, but at least the United States. So I pay around three, four hundred dollars per semester um so 800 bucks a year for my master's education so it's very cheap the teachers some of them are excellent some of them are okay the lab that i'm in doing research again i don't want to go into detail right now i'm gonna have to wait to explain in more detail after i graduate but the lab has been okay it's not the greatest lab it's not state of the art but it's functional the reason I came to Boazici is because I loved Turkey since I was 10 years old. I had an obsession, a love for Istanbul, and I always told myself I'm going to end up living there one day. So Boazici was kind of my ticket into transitioning from the US into Turkey. And I knew I wanted to do my master's degree because I really like education or at least I did like it and I like the idea of academia and all this stuff so I saw Boazici as the perfect ticket to kind of transition into Istanbul and to live in Istanbul permanently because that's my goal after I graduate so that's the main reason why I chose Boazici and also because Boazici is an English supposedly an English speaking institution so I thought it would be easier for me to get in there and since everything is in English it will give me kind of time to you know figure out what I'm gonna do learn Turkish and all this stuff so that's why I chose Boazici. I also get asked if after I graduate from Boazici whether or not I will stay in Turkey or leave. I want to stay in Turkey that has been my goal since I was 10 years old so my aim after i graduate is to stay if i can find the means to stay so those are all the questions overall i kind of want to give you guys also a brief summary of my experience so far at boazici so i've been at boazici university for two years this is the end of my second year and in my program, how it works is the cognitive science program is a three-year program. The first year being remedial year. So if you don't know anything about cognitive science, cognitive science is an interdisciplinary area. So it includes linguistics, philosophy, computer science, neuroscience, psychology, those five disciplines. So in my program, in the remedial year, you have to take a class from each of the five disciplines. So I had to take a philosophy class, a computer science class, linguistics, so on and so forth. So that's the first year of my program. 
The second year of the program is the course year in the disciplines you specialize in. So my disciplines are neuroscience and computer science. So I have to take courses from neuroscience or psychology and computer science. So that's my second year. So in the second year, I took just classes involving my two disciplines. The third year is the thesis year. So you um, enroll in the thesis course for the year, you do your experiments, and all of that in your third and final year. However, because I want to leave Boazichi so desperately, <laughs> um, I want to graduate early. So my friend who is a year above me, he was finishing his experiments this year and he's, um, he's graduating this year. Because he's the only person in my lab who kind of taught me everything that I needed to know and because him and I are really close, He's like, why don't you do an experiment that kind of builds off of my experiment? So we kind of did an experiment that they're like sister experiments. And in our lab, we're going to publish the results together in a paper. So, for example, his experiment focused on one specific cell group in the brain and my experiment focused on a different cell group within that same brain region. So once he did his experiments and he finished, then we immediately started my experiments. So I did my experiments my second semester of this year, which is still my course year. So I was taking courses and I was doing my experiments, which is normally not how it's done. But because I'm kind of this overachiever and I just, I really want to leave, I pushed myself to do these experiments to finish and to finalize the experiment part, which is the hardest part. Now it's the summertime, my course year is over and I am looking to graduate in the next few months. Um, so right now I'm writing my thesis. So it's uh, it hasn't been <laughs> very fun. This year in specific, my second year at Boazichi has been the hardest year I've ever encountered academically. It's just, I've had so many mental breakdowns. You know, the course load was extreme. I was taking more, typically you're supposed to take three, four classes. I was taking, I think six, because I was trying to empty my schedule for the second semester because I knew I was gonna do my experiments. I was really, you know, overworking myself um, because I just really needed to get out of the environment I was in with my lab. And also, you know, I have, there are other personal issues that were bothering me and that I also need to kind of deal with. And it's just been very difficult. Um, it's not easy. I'm surprised with myself that I came this far. There have been a lot of times in this year alone where I just seriously considered dropping out of the program and just turning my back and moving forward. But on the other hand, I like to finish what I started. It hasn't been easy. Um, the campus and Boazichi itself, it's a beautiful university. Um, there are a lot of good people there and they do have things to offer but unfortunately in my program in my laboratory things were not matching up with what i wanted so i just really need to find a way out it's been lovely sharing my experience with people because it's difficult being a foreigner and going to a new place, a new school with new people, and it's a totally different system than what you're used to. It is challenging. So I really hope that my message gets across to you guys. And if you guys are really considering going to Boazichi, I would like to give you my full experience and answer your questions because I didn't have that. There was no one I could turn to for questions or their experience or anything. So if you guys have any questions, any comments, please leave them down below. You can um, subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on TikTok. I, I share a lot of videos about Boazichi and I answer, I try to answer everyone's questions. You can also follow me on Instagram. You can send me a DM. I've received so many DMs from you guys about your questions to Boazichi, so I hope that I've been helpful 
and as always please subscribe to my channel please like this video leave any comments down below and i hope to see you guys very soon bye